To many of you, the term Ebola probably didn't enter your vocabulary until around March of 2014, when a bunch of news outlets began telling you that a new strain of virus was about to wipe out the entire world. Fox News alert now, the Ebola emergency here in America. The killer virus. Spreading much faster than efforts to contain it. Spiraling out of control. Stop admitting West Africans into America right now. Several <laughs> questions. Can they go to the movies? The hospitals aren't ready for Ebola. All hell is about to break loose. <laughs> They were wrong on two things on that statement, one of which was the wiping out of the entire world part, which hasn't happened yet, and two, that this was a new strain of virus. In fact, Ebola wasn't a new virus at all, as the first outbreak occurred about 40 years ago, and there have been six other major outbreaks before 2014. So why has there been so much attention on the latest Ebola outbreak? Should we be worrying about this virus in our beautiful country? And more importantly, how did this virus originate? To answer those questions, we must first take a quick trip to Africa and travel back in time to the 1970s, but that's a minor detail. So anyways, here we go. A mysterious illness in the Republic of Sudan was being reported in 1976. The doctors in Sudan had never seen a disease like this before, so they decided to give it a new name. The Sudan virus. A plus on creativity. It would take several months and 602 new cases before it could be properly identified as a new genus of virus. They ended up naming it after a river 60 miles from where the second outbreak occurred. It was called the Ebola River. The scientific community wasn't quite sure at the time how patient zero first became infected with Ebola, but the leading theory is that it was probably from direct contact with an animal like a bat, a monkey, or this cute little guy. Even though we don't know what caused the first case of Ebola, we do know that it spreads through blood and bodily fluids. This includes things like saliva, mucus, vomit, feces, sweat, tears, breast milk, urine, and, well, another fun bodily fluid. From 1976 to 2012, 2,361 cases had been reported worldwide, with the vast majority of these cases occurring in Central Africa and zero cases occurring in Western Africa, until 2013. In a small village in southern Guinea, a two-year-old boy named Emil Uamuano died of a mysterious illness on December 28, 2013. Within a few weeks, his mother, sister, and grandmother had all become very ill and soon died as well. The unknown illness soon spread throughout nearby villages and eventually made its way to the capital city of Conakry. On March 22nd of 2014, the illness was finally identified as Ebola after three months and 59 fatalities. A large reason why it took months to identify the virus was because medical examiners had never seen a case of Ebola in West Africa. If the virus was able to be identified at an earlier stage, it may have been possible to contain it or slow down its progress, potentially saving thousands of lives. But within a few days, cases had been reported in the neighboring country of Liberia. On May 26th, it had spread to Sierra Leone. By July 25th, Nigeria had reported its first case. In August, aid workers from the United States, Spain, and Germany were medically evacuated back to their home countries while carrying the disease. As the Christmas of 2014 rolled along, there had been 20,000 cases of Ebola, resulting in 7,500 deaths spanning 10 countries. Just before New Year's Eve, a story would be released by German investigators regarding the origin of the outbreak. They examined the village and home of the first patient, Emil Uamuano, and found that he liked to play near a tree 50 meters from his house. After some time, they had found that Emil's favorite tree was also home to many bats. If one of those bats was a carrier for the Ebola virus and made contact with the two-year-old boy at any time, it may have indirectly caused the entire Ebola outbreak in West Africa. As of November 10th, 2015, 
Nine of the 10 Ebola infected countries were considered free of the virus. And as of November 17th, 2015, a three week old baby was the last infected Ebola patient and the youngest survivor. Although the fact that this baby was able to survive the Ebola virus at such a young age makes me a little bit suspicious that this baby is secretly a superhero or something. So that brings us to the next question. Did Ebola deserve all of the media and public attention that it received? Well, that answer is probably not. One of the reasons why Ebola was touted as being such a scary disease is because in its early stages, it was killing about 85% of the people it infected. But eventually, the mortality rate would drop to around 40 or 50% due to developed immunity, public awareness of the disease, and treatment of infected patients. But when we look at Ebola and other diseases on a macro scale, Ebola probably shouldn't have even been on the radar. For example, during the Ebola outbreak of 2014, malaria was killing well over 10 times as many people in West Africa as Ebola was. And actually, things like car accidents, malnourishment, HIV, the influenza, respiratory infections, birth complications, and even diarrhea killed more people in West Africa during the outbreak. So maybe all of the attention and resources that was spent on the Ebola outbreak should have gone to larger threats to the people of West Africa. Like the large threat of the hippo, which has killed more people in the last decade than Ebola. Honestly, the reason why Ebola kept getting all of the media attention was because that's what got the most clicks on the internet, you know, the most newspapers sold, and the most watch time on news stations. Everyone knows that any sort of news outlet tends to rely on fear and negative stories to attract the most attention. And eventually, with enough fear in the public's eye, it'll lead to reactions like this. This is ridiculousness here. I had to go to the hospital emergency room just to get a checkup. I had to check the hell up if I got the Ebola. I wanted to make sure because I had diarrhea for the last two years every single day. So I don't know if I got it or if I ate a bad burrito from Chipotle and it's still in my system. I can't go to nobody's house and have some dinner at their house. I don't know what the hell they was doing. They might scratch their ass, got Ebola, and put some Ebola assness in the spaghetti. Now I'm slurping on spaghetti and slurping on Ebola at the same time. So should us Canadians fear the great Ebola virus? I would say probably not because there have been zero documented cases of Ebola in Canada, meaning that Canadians are more likely to die from trying to take a selfie with a beaver than we are to die of Ebola. But even if Ebola did come to Canada, we are much more prepared for outbreaks than other countries because of our amazing healthcare system, public policies, education system, and government intervention. Yeah, we're kind of awesome. So what did we learn from this video? Well, we learned how Ebola originated and spread throughout Western Africa. We learned why it probably shouldn't be as big of an issue as other things in Africa, like HIV, influenza, and diarrhea. And we learned why us in Canada should not fear this Ebola virus. That's it, everyone. Video's over. So thank you for listening to me ramble throughout this entire video. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I know I did, I think. Oh, shouldn't sign off like that. But I am. Bye.